uh, order upon request. Amen? So before we get any further, y'all ready for the word? Y'all yeah. excited? Yeah. I know that was a lot. Hey, that's real short, right, Pastor? I did good? Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Amen, amen. So look, let's go ahead and pray and prepare ourselves to receive the word. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just give you honor and glory and praise, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for this atmosphere is conducive of, li of life right now, Lord God. Lord, we know that when two or more are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. So, Holy Spirit, go through this place, Lord, and just soften even the hardest heart, Lord God. Lord, we know that one word can change every situation, Lord. So, may that one word be spoken to that situation that needs to be spoken to today, Lord God. Lord, I, I pray right now that we all decrease and you increase, Lord God. Give us knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Increase our convictions so that we can grow and lay them things down that need to be laid down at your feet today, Lord. At your altar, Lord God. So, we just thank you, Lord. I come against any distraction, any confusion, anything that would try to cloud us or, or uh, hinder us from receiving what you have in store for us this morning. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I speak the mind of Christ over every individual that's in this place, Lord. We thank you. We give you honor and glory and praise. And the church said, Amen. 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 Let me see that mic. Let me see that mic. Praise God. Prophet Leon, can you come up here real quick? It's a mighty man of God right here. Amen. We will transform you all in. He speak a shalom. He's like, what are you? What, what, what? <laughs> In season, out of season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speak a shalom blessing over the church. If okay. you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Father, we ask right now that everyone that's sitting in these chairs and in this building, even up on this day, uh, five years, Father, the, the Hebrew letter of five is the breath of God and it means to behold so behold this day of the breath of the Ruach of God releasing shalom peace over you right now I decree and declare all hostility and chaos be destroyed in your life right now in the name of Yeshua Jesus Christ for shalom is the authority that destroys all chaos and confusion right now from this day forward, you shall have nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing lacking. So, Father, I release shalom in a spirit, in a soul, and in a body right now. I release your shalom of heaven right now. It is the atmosphere of heaven. So, we release it now in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I knew I heard the Holy Spirit say, give him the mic. Praise God. Praise God. The extension of grace. Tap, tap your neighbor and say, I need some of that. <laughs> Amen. Who don't need grace, right? What is grace? Unmerited favor. Amen. Unmerited. That means you don't deserve it. Okay? So, so if grace is a gift from God, right? That means we don't work for that grace because then it wouldn't be a gift. That means we earned it, right? Amen. It's not a by works lest no man should boast. Amen? It's the gift of God. Unmerited favor. Who's grateful that they didn't get what they deserve? Oh, God. I'm going to give you one more time. Who's grateful that they didn't get what they deserve? Who's grateful that they didn't always get caught? Okay, I'm going to hit everybody in here, you know what I mean? So, thank God we didn't get what we deserve. So, if we didn't get what we deserve, why do we feel the need to give people what we think they deserve? <laughs> we got to extend grace. The grace that we're giving we got to extend it unto others. See, the extension of grace. See, we're saved by grace through faith. Everybody has been given a measure of faith. Okay? So if we save by grace through faith and everybody's been given a measure of faith, then that faith is going to push you to receive that grace because you have to believe. The only way is there for you if you first believe it. And, and this works on levels, okay? Because you could think, 
man, I don't have the grace to do that. Then guess what? You won't have the grace to do that. Because you got to believe. So in that belief, the Bible says to grow in grace in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. So that means the more I get to know Jesus, the more liberated I become. The more I can do through my belief in knowing Jesus Christ is almighty and I'm called through a high calling Christ Jesus. So then I get over myself because I understand it's not about myself. Anybody walking with me? All right. Second Peter 318. But grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Forever's a long time. Come on. Forever, ever. Praise God. Now, we must extend grace, but the extension of grace does not exclude accountability. Okay? Because, because of love, we hold one another accountable. Iron sharpens iron. But how many know when iron sharpens iron, sparks fly? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Grace is not a license to commit sin. Because it's grace that should keep you from committing. How many, say, how many can believe it's grace that kept you here? Right. Amen. Yeah. It's grace that kept you even when you didn't want to be kept. We're going to be real in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's grace. So we got to extend that grace. Praise God. How, how many know we all, oh, let, let me ask you. Who has strengths and weaknesses? Okay, who's there not raising their hand? That, that's your weakness, okay? You just got revelation today, amen? So we all got strengths and weaknesses, right? So if we know we have a weakness, then we have something that we're working on, right? So us understanding that we have weaknesses and there's things that we're working on, it should put us in a position to be able to extend grace on someone else that is also working on something. Amen? Amen? Because the minute you can't extend that grace, you put yourself in a position like you you don't have a weakness. Now you're judging somebody upon their weakness, but how about if they judge you upon yours? Amen? Oh, but it's hard because we hide our weaknesses. Right? It goes back to that, oh, thank you, Jesus, that we didn't get what we deserved. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. We all have something we're working on. We all should want to do better. Amen? Amen. I I, want to be a better pastor. I want to be a better dad. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better worker. Amen? And even when I, when I think I got, I'm always looking for ways to do better because complacency is a criminal against elevation. Complacency is a criminal against elevation. So many times we do so much ministry and so many people that's grown up in, or in broken households or, or, or generational curses or, or in addiction or, or whatever the case may be. But they begin to get complacent and comfortable with the position they're in mm-hmm. to where they just say, you know, I've come to grips. Yep. You better lose your grips. Woo. Amen. Preaching. We don't come to grips with anything contrary to the word of God. Oh, well, every, everybody has sinned. No, all have sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. We should all push forward towards elevation, trying to be more like Christ. Who, who, whose image were we created in? So that means we, we, we're supposed to be reflecting him. Amen? We're reaching high, so <laughs> we're reaching high so we don't have time to be petty. Okay? Come on, it's a high call in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, everybody, you know, I, I done been petty. I could get real petty. I'm, I'm just being real right now. But that conviction hits because of the extension of grace that extended to me to push me into repentance. Amen? Amen. See, that grace is there 
so you don't condemn yourself. Amen? Amen. It's not there for you to get comfortable in sin. It's there to push you up from it. Grace works two ways and it's always up. When you hit a certain level, he'll give you the grace to be quickened and enter into another level, into a new season. Or you can fall down and he'll give you the grace to pick you back up. I'd rather use the grace to go to the next season. Amen? Praise God. Ephesians 5, 1 to 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. To walk in love is walking in the extension of grace. If we're imitating him and he loved us, regardless of us, regardless of, of what we've done, he woke us up in the morning to give us an opportunity to get closer to him, to have relationship with him, amen? So that's the same type of love we got to extend to this world around us. Amen? Do you, are y'all in agreement with me? Luke 6 36, therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Amen. In order to be merciful, you must first have wisdom and understanding. Amen. It's impossible to give mercy when you feel like they don't deserve it or you feel like you've been hurt, amen? But once you have wisdom and understanding, the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and in all you're getting, get understanding, and that allows you to extend grace onto others because you understand the grace that you first received. <coughs> amen? Yeah. And, unless you're perfect. Being merciful requires wisdom and understanding. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Oh, the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. Yeah. Happy neighbor say, that's the beginning. That's the beginning. <laughs> so if that's where we start, that means we grow from there, Amen. So the beginning of wisdom, the principal thing is wisdom. The principal thing is to fear the Lord. The problems we see in is because they're not fearing the Lord no more. They, the, the thing on Facebook, they, had, they, they was playing secular music, talking about surfing and swagging or whatever, in the house, in the sanctuary. No reverence, no fear. People will pimp the gospel for a lack of fear. That's the beginning. That's the principal thing, the fear of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And then in that fear, it has to develop into a reverence, yes. into a reverence, into an admiration. Into, it, it, it just got to develop to where you're in love with the father. Amen. Yeah. So it's not just you're doing it by fear. You're doing it because of love. Amen. But it's just like. My, my, my kids, they got to know that I will discipline them when they have to be disciplined, amen? But I don't want them to be scared of me. But I want them to know that we, you're going to get in line when this belt come off, right? I don't even, I might have whooped Alex once or twice. I just take the belt and he gets right. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Discipline swiftly, amen? So it got to develop to... A love, an admiration. Remember, the one exalted in might. That means we got to love him and we got to like him. Come on. Come on. Some of y'all, some like, well, I got to love her, but I don't have to. <laughs> oh, see, see, when I see who can finish my sentence, I know what you're struggling with. Yeah. I got I, I to gotta love him. I ain't got to like him. Mm, I don't think you love him. Uh, just, just caught a little something in your tone right there. I mean, no, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. 
oh, okay. Nah, no, I ain't got to. And then when you start rolling your neck and all of that, like too much going on. That ain't no love. Because if you don't like them, it's only because you're judging them based upon their weakness that you don't like. Oh, should I drop the mic? No, no I ain't going to drop it yet. I ain't, I ain't gonna drop. It's getting too hard in here. I'm about to just look at the cross and preach to y'all, amen? Only by him, amen? So we got to love him and we got to like him, amen? He gave me this thing. It's not about seeking the next innovative church program, but seeking the heart of the Father. Now, there's nothing wrong with creating programs because we are made in the image of the Creator. Therefore, we are creative, but what's created must never be at the expense of compromise. That's the fear of the Lord. Amen? The fear of the Lord is going to keep you in right standing with the Lord. Amen? So if you fear the Lord, it's not about the next way you can make money. Amen? It's about the next way you can please the Lord. Amen. Not saying he don't want you to make money because he supplies provision. And he said, meditate on my laws day and night and I will prosper whatever you touch. He wants you to have those things but never at the compromise of your relationship with him. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. So... Because we were made in his likeness. He's the creator. We must be creative. But we were made in his image, in his likeness. That means we were created to replicate him. We were created to mirror him. We were created to mirror his reflection. Amen. So if we are images in him and we're reflecting him, then other people, when they see you, they should see him. Okay. Come on. Come on. How can you... Mimic someone you don't know. How can you mimic someone you don't know? So how are you going to know him if you're not in his word? Because he is the word manifested. Amen. So the more you get in that word, grow in grace in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. The more you get in that word, you mimic that word, you're mimicking him. So then you're reflecting him. So guess what? The Bible says we are to be dead and hid in Christ Jesus. So if we dead and hid in Christ Jesus, then God don't see us. He sees his son. Amen. Say reflection, reflection, reflection. We have to reflect the Father. Be dead and hid in Christ Jesus. A dead body can't get offended. You ever try to offend a dead body? I hope not, but I'm just saying. Just, just for the sake, just for the analogy, analogy, the body's dead, it's gone. You can do whatever you want. You're not going to get a reaction. Amen. So the more we die to self and be hid in Christ Jesus, they don't get our reaction. The way you get offended is revealing there's things inside of you that's still not there. Mm. But it's necessary. How, how, do you, how do you expect to graduate if you never take a test? It's getting quiet. Isn't it? Okay, we're going to do part two, amen? This is the I just got the revelation that this is going to be a series. Praise God. <laughs> we have to mimic him. And we're like, well, you mimic him, but then we all going to be alike because you're supposed to be an individual. Well, God is vast enough. God is big enough, exalted in might, amen, omnipresent, all over the place at the same time, amen. There's enough for him for us to individually mimic him and still stay unique and not lose our individuality. Did, 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 did you catch it? He's big enough, amen, for everybody here to mimic him and still be unique because there's no other you. He was so intrinsic in the creation of you. Nobody got your fingerprint, your hair follicles. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Praise God. A, just grab it on your beard if it's not on your head, amen. He numbered that too. Praise God, Amen. But he was so distinct when he created you, he didn't create you to mimic him and to mimic her. He created you to mimic him. And in that mimicking of him, he put you in a place that he can use you because he can't anoint the you you pretend to be. He called you to be you. And that's a battle 
that you're going to have throughout your walk. Amen. I done been there. I, and sometimes I visit again. So I was like, oh, yesterday, I'm, all, I'm, a, I'm in, a, uh, in, in a thing at the Baptist Association. They got councilmen. They got the chief of police. They got judges. They got all the, I'm like, man, I'm the, I'm the least in the room. But I wasn't, I wasn't discouraged because then I understood it wasn't me that got me in the room. You know what I'm saying? So I can't mess it up. I've been, I, I was called to speak at this church, and it was, it was a big church, and they had, they had presidents of, of organizations and nonprofits and bishops and deacons and name some other stuff, apostles and all, yeah, all of that, you know what I mean? And, uh, and right before I got in there, a person was like, that's your pastor? <laughs> but they didn't know I heard because I was coming around the thing. Oh I, can't, oh, I get to meet your pastor today. Oh, you met my pastor yesterday. He was the one rapping. That's your pastor? <laughs> so then I felt like, I was like, oh, man, I really. So then I, I get in there, and then I see these, these people that they're dignitary, that they're calling up here, and, it's me, and I'm like, and I'm the one that got to deliver the word. Come on, Jesus. And the worship, I'm praying. And hey, can I be all the way transparent with y'all? I'm praying. Lord, don't let me say you heard me, Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Don't judge me. Look, y'all judging me now. Look, don't judge me. I'm thinking of the biggest words I know for my introduction. I'm talking cerebral cortex, and I'm about to go. And then, and then God said, just be yourself. I'm like, man, it's really that easy. But when he spoke it, just be you. I, I'm telling you, I heard him. I heard him more, more, more clear than I ever heard him. But when, he, when God speaks to you, he don't only speak to your present. He speaks to your future, amen. He speaks to your past. When he speaks, he said, just be you. It was you that I called, and it's you that's here. Just be you while you're here. But guess what? Where I'm going to bring you, I still need you to be you, amen. That doesn't mean you don't get more educated. That doesn't mean you don't study. That doesn't mean you pursue these things. But that means that you got to be you. God called you and there ain't no other you. Amen. And once you understand that, you receive the grace. Amen. So then if you receive that grace that called you to be you, why are you trying to change everybody else? Not saying there's no accountability. Come on. I'm saying everybody got something they're working on and you need to extend grace. Because what the enemy wants to do is bring division and discord. How can you pour into somebody that wants nothing to do with you? Praise God. So we got to reflect the Lord. Amen. And well, let's just run to it right here. In Genesis 6, man lost his identity. Hold up, hold up. Don't start reading ahead of me. Look at y'all. Cheaters. <laughs> Look, he always throw that cheat sheet up there. That means he's paying attention. Hey, Mike, we give a shout out to Brother Gavin. So in Genesis 6, man lost his identity. He says, it says the sons of God were having sex with the daughters of men. And they were creating giants. It, 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 was, it was a mess. Let, let, now, go ahead, pull it up there. Genesis 6, 5 to 8. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. But Noah say, but, but, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And God's grace. And God saw the wickedness of man, and it was great in the earth. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Can, can, can anybody agree that we might be there right now? Yes. That, 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 that man wants to create man wants to create man without God. And then they want to say what you're supposed to be when you weren't created to be X chromosome, Y chromosome, and now they act like they don't have chromosomes. 
Come, come on. It's, 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 it's the wickedness of man. Sin takes you further than you ever plan to go and keeps you longer than you ever plan to stay. There's nothing wrong with people working on things. We got to love on everybody. Amen. Praise God, because when you understand you have weaknesses, you can extend grace upon others. Amen. I'm talking about in general, you see the enemy having a field day, that the wickedness of man is increasing. Amen. The man lost their identity because their identity is supposed to be in God. Amen. So now you see this corrupted culture that's trying to shift and create an atmosphere that is not conducive to life. It's conducive to death. The wages of sin is. Okay, so we're looking at this, so it's like, all right, they lost their identity, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Who wants that grace? Come on, who wants that? Okay, 30%, 40%. Who wants that grace? Oh, don't scream like you got it all together, you hear me? We all need it. Use flash. So... Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Man, let me see what's up with Noah, because I want to be like that, right? 2 Peter 2, 5. And did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. A preacher of righteousness. Give you. This is the Bible, okay? This is not self-proclaimed. It's not internet. This is this, this not this not somebody else calling them a preacher. This is the infallible word of God inspired. This is the breath of God that's calling him a preacher of righteousness. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord because he was a preacher of righteousness. What are you preaching? Pray. I know you are. I know y'all are. Well, I don't. I, I'm not gonna lie with you. <laughs> I don't know everybody. Amen. I would love to know everybody. But what I do want to be concerned with is with your, with, with, with your soul, that you do make it to see the Father and not just wait till you get there to meet him, that you live out your purpose right here. Amen? Yes, A preacher of righteousness. We're all called to spread the good news. Amen? Amen? Amen. Come on. So what are you preaching on your job? Righteous, righteous. What are you preaching on your Facebook? Righteous, righteous. What are you preaching on your Instagram? And look, 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 there's no, the, the, look, he's rich in mercy. Be merciful as he is merciful. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So this is just, all right, I want grace because guess what? That grace wasn't just for Noah. It was for his whole family. Amen. Amen. They got to come to a point to where you get over yourself. See, when you get lost in Christ, you lose your identity to pick up his. Yes, sir. Yes. So that means my idea doesn't matter no more. And, and, and God has given everybody gifts, amen. So in, in my, in, in my, I won't say immaturity for lack of a better word, but just coming to Christ, I knew I've always wanted to rap. So I gave him that because I felt like there was too much of me involved in that. Not knowing that he, his gift and his calling is irrevocable and all of that, but I gave it to him. And God, sometimes he's just checking the motive of your heart. He, can you set your heart to really give it to him? Because you can't run game on God. And in that, He'll come back and say, nah, I'm going to give it back to you, but even better. Amen. So when he gave me the music back, he said the music, he gave it back with instruction. He said the music is going to be a platform to minister my word. Amen. And that's what I hold fast to right now to this day. But I had to get lost in him. I had to be dead and hid in him. Noah, a preacher of righteousness, he received grace from God. Amen. Knowing, so, so God called him to build the ark, amen, and, and he was in the ark on top of the flood waters, amen. Some of y'all, the waters are coming. Things are getting dry, and I don't know, like, I don't, this is not the nursery, this is not the BBS or the children's church or Noah's story. That was, that was really a horror story. When they was in that boat, an entire generation of people drowned. And you just hear them probably clawing on, trying to get in the boat, but couldn't get in the boat because it was too late. Drowning, losing their breath, dying. That man, that, that, that's heavy. And then God said, yeah, the people had to drown because they lost their image. 
The image was in the world. It was in sin. It was in the lust of the flesh. Now Noah had my image because he was a preacher of righteousness. So I gave him grace. So God just showed me anything that does not replicate and reflect the image of God has to drown. I'm going to say that again. Anything that doesn't reflect the image of God has to drown. The waters are necessary, but the waters are not meant to destroy you. They're meant to deliver you. It was a storm that come that saved Paul's life, amen? And he held on to even a plank of the boat and made it to Martha and Martha. Eventually, he got to go where he desired to go. It was the flood that came. It was the storm that came, amen? But when you see the storm, see the water's got to come. The fire's got to come because it reveals who you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It reveals do you really have faith, amen? Because it's easy to praise God when everything's good. Yes, sir. But can you praise him through the storm? Can you praise him in the storm? Can you be like them three Hebrew boys and say, throw me in that fire. Even if he slay me, amen? Because then guess who shows up in the fire? We want to pray the fire away, but when you pray the fire away, you will never get the encounter that you receive in the midst of the fire. In those moments, you know he's real. And can't nothing sway you from serving him because he pulled me out the fire. I didn't get what I deserve. How could I not love a God that good? And if I love a God that good, how can I not love my brother that I see every day? When you don't reflect his image, you'll drown. That's why you got to get in the word so you can get to know him, so you can mimic him. And then in understanding of the word, then when the waters come, you won't drown because you hold him fast to the word. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans of good and not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. See, when you quote that in the midst of the disaster, but how are you going to quote it if you don't know it? And how can you have the grace to receive it if you don't believe it? Because you can say it without belief, and it's not going to help you. You're just talking. You ever met somebody like that? Yes. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> oh, praise God. I'll be having fun up here. Amen. Praise God. So we must be dead and hid in Christ. So if we are dead and hid in Christ, then he doesn't see us. He sees his son. Reflection. Praise God. The reflection is visible through persecution. Say that again. The reflection is visible through persecution. Amen. Yes, when you're going through it and you still got a praise on your lips yes, and you still got a praise in your heart yes, and the people around you see you going through it, but then they see you remaining and they see you with this constant praise. Amen. Yes. This you're reflecting the father because guess what? He endured the cross yes. for the joy that was set before him. Yes. That's the shalom peace that cancels yes. chaos because if you don't have the peace, you'll be in the midst of chaos and then when the storm comes, you'll drown. Oh, but if you stay in the boat. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, okay. Stay in the boat. And then you're on the boat with the one that can speak to the storm. Okay, that's a whole other word. All right. So once we understand these things, we can learn to embrace the waters and we can embrace the fire because the fire is not meant to destroy us. It's meant to purify us. How many know you got to put it on the fire to get the cut out? Some of y'all know. We all going to know right here. Look, Psalm 66, 10. For thou, O God, has proved us. Thou has tried us as silver is tried. Yes, sir. Yes. Job 23, 10. But he knoweth that he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth. Ooh, wee, come on. Let's have your neighbor say, get your shine on. Come on, we talking about pure gold, amen? Say, say that's me. You got, you got to know who you are, amen? I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. 
I know what you spoke. Oh, there he is. Praise God. We got to know you're pure gold. You've been through the fire, but guess what? It didn't destroy you. You're still alive. You're still in the house of God. So if the fire didn't destroy you, that means it's been purifying you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But thou, O God, has proved us that thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Job 23, 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Proverbs 17, 3. The finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. The Lord. Stop blaming the devil. These things are happening so you can reflect the image of the Father. So you can be dead and hid in Him. And He can be glorified. And then He can trust you. Then He can take you from glory to glory. Because you understand the glory ain't about you. It's about the one who created you. Proverbs 17.3 The finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. But the Lord trieth the hearts. 1 Peter 1.7 That the trial of your faith. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You're not going to know till the skies crack. People can play church all they want. When them skies crack, amen, it's going to be revelation, amen. I want to make sure I'm in that number, praise God. And I don't know if the, 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 the raps are come, pre raps I don't care, I'm just ready. If it comes, I want to fly, shoot, I want to meet them in the sky. <laughs> that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 48, 10, Behold, I have refined thee. But not with silver, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. In the furnace of affliction. Don't consider it strange, these various trials that you're going through. It's purifying you. It's revealing the faith that's inside of you. Hi, some of y'all been through some stuff, but you're still in the house of God. And I'm not even talking about in there. Well, you've been through some stuff in the church. But you still standing. It's revealing. Don't think when, when you give your life to Christ, it's zippity doo that day. Don't think you're not going to get attacked. Don't think you're not going to get battled. But I'm telling you, through the battle, you must remain planted. And as you plan it, amen, the sun going to shine again because the storm won't last forever. Right. Amen. The rain's not going to last forever. But as long as we're here, then we might as well shine together. I was reading about the silversmith and about the refiner. And he's given this story, and it was just a beautiful analogy and a depiction of what we're reading in the scriptures, amen? Because the silversmith, the boy's asking, why, why is the fire turned up so high? And he says, see, a good silversmith knows how to turn the fire up just right. He said, he said if the fire's not hot enough, it's not going to get the impurities out. And if the fire is too hot, it's going to destroy it. So the fire got to be just right. Can, can, can I tell you the fire is just right? Can I tell you whatever you're going through is not going to destroy you? Even though it feels like it, it hurts, amen. But can I tell you he's refining you? So, 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 then, he, so then he said, why you sit down? He said, because I got to sit down. And I got to watch the silver when it goes in. I got to watch the gold when it goes in because I can only keep it in there for the right time. I got to know when to take it out. If I keep you in the fire too long, you're going to be destroyed. If I don't keep you in the fire long enough, you will not be purified. Can I tell you, we have the ultimate refiner, amen? And if you're in it, you're in it in just enough time and the heat is just right, amen? And he said, well, how do you know when to take it out? He said, that's why I'm sitting down and looking at it because when I see my reflection in that silver then it's ready to come out you going through what you're going through because he's wanting to see his reflection in you and then he takes you out amen 
He takes you out and he brings you from glory to glory. The pain's not going to last forever. The pain is for a purpose. God knows what he's doing. He created you. He fashioned you in your mother's womb. He knew your name. He's perfect. Embrace whatever you got going on. Reflect the Father in the midst of the storm. Speak the word. And I'm telling you, breakthrough is right there. We went through a rough season. A lot, a lot going on. Amen. And when I tell you just this week, God did a breakthrough. Amen. But it was after I set my heart unto the things of the Lord. He's revealing me things that's not all the way dead yet. That needs to die because where I want to bring you, that's going to be a hindrance. And when I give it to you, there's no added sorrows to it because I know how to leave you in the fire just long enough. Oh, you already got the revelation that this is a series? Let's start right here. Malachi 3.3. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, and they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. That's one that he can receive, amen? So whatever's going on in your life, I want to, I want to invite you to come up here, amen, to leave it right here, to trust God, God with everything inside of you. Amen. We're going to go into part two later because I said you have to have wisdom and understanding. I want to read what mercy truly is because mercy not only means that you give mercy to people, it means that even when the people are not deserving of it, you extend it, but you still want to see them do better. Amen. But it's impossible to do that without first receiving from the Father. Once you first have the love from the Father, then you can extend that love to your brothers and to your sisters and to your neighbors. Amen? You've been in the fire. Anybody been in the fire? Anybody can testify that they've been in the fire? I come to tell you, praise Him. Let Him see His image in you. Reflect the Father and you coming out that fire better and stronger than when you went in. Amen? When God does a work, he does it with excellence. Amen. He knows exactly when to take you out. He knows exactly where he wants to bring you. And one man of God told me like this, you're going through all of that because the calling on your life must be great. And I said, man, you must be right. And this is when I was in the program. And then there was an excitement that came. I was like, God, you going to trust me? You're going to trust me? Well, I'm going to go through any battle you send me in as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Sometimes it gets hard, and I'll be like, God, don't trust me that much. It's hard. And he said, I called you. I called you by name. I know who I am. I know what he's spoken. You got to know who you are and what God has spoken. You got to know who you are and what God has spoken. There's a right time when you're coming out that fire, amen, because you're reflecting the Father, amen. You keep, persevere. The enemy's biggest trick, he wants to get you to go backwards, but there's nothing back there. Everything good is in front of you, amen, because heaven is in front of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're going to start with a declaration of faith, with a rededication. If there's anybody back there that wants to rededicate their life to Jesus Christ, we're going to do that right now, amen. Come forward. This is your public, for you to publicly acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. Go ahead and do me a favor, y'all back there. Tap your neighbor and say, come on, I'll walk up there with you. They ain't going to know if it's you or me. We're going to walk up there together. Amen. Praise God. Because that same devil that's telling you, you ain't got to do all that. He's going to be the same one to condemn you and say, you should have did that. Why didn't you do that? Amen. Today's the day of salvation. This is activation. This is putting feet with your faith. This is humbling yourself and God is faithful to exalt. Praise God. Keep People still moving. I'm not in a rush. Go ahead. Tap your neighbor. Say, let's walk up there. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, we believe that you died, crucified, and you rose again on the third day through the power, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Coward devil, get under my feet. You have no authority. I have authority through the blood of Jesus Christ. 
today, today I, repent I repent of all my sins. All my, sins. My, life my life is no longer, no longer. My, own. my own. It's yours, Lord. Lord. Have, your Have your way. In Jesus' name, Jesus. we pray. And let the church scream. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the troubled waters, Father God. Father, even in the Bible, you said when the waters were troubled and they were dipping it, they would receive miracles. So, Father God, we thank you for the troubling of waters that are producing miracles, Father God. And your word says signs and wonders will follow those that believe. We don't follow them, they follow us. So, Father God, we thank you for the fire. We thank you for the water. We thank you that it couldn't destroy us. We thank you that it has been purifying us, Father God. We thank you for what's next. We thank you for what was. And we thank you for what is to be. Because you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You will never leave us or forsake us. You that began a good work in us is faithful to complete what you started, Father God. So I speak right now. For your grace to be upon everyone here that they grow in grace in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, Father God. And that they're able to extend that grace that they have freely received. Allow them to freely give, Lord. Lord, we pray for those with hard hearts that you will soften them. We pray for unification in the body of Christ. Lord, we pray for unification in the body of Christ because we want to do nothing but be good stewards with our positions here on this earth and glorify your holy name on earth as it is in heaven. Father, have your way in our lives and through our lives. Father, use us up. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church scream. Amen.